Hey guys, what is up? Awesome the sauce here. Hope you guys are great. And today we're gonna be talking about all the new gear in the new world of Nilfin. Now there's a lot of fun stuff happening with the gear this time around, so let's get right into it. If you actually are in test realm, you can talk to my boy Louise over here, my boy Louise. And he basically has all of the recipes for the best gear that you can get from this world. Now keep in mind, you can get it as a regular drop, but you can also get this gear through crafting. Now as a quick overview, I'm just on my storm because that's just the one that I happen to get to level 160 on, but basically Basically, when you're comparing the gear, it is definitely a major upgrade for Merciless gear. And it's not just stats this time around. I don't know if y'all are seeing this, but there's basically new pins that they've added into Wizard 101. Y'all see that shield, the two swords, all of that jazz? So basically, this is the direction that Wizard 101 is going instead of adding random damage, I guess, to the Merciless gear, right? That 17 damage and the three pierce, instead of making that like what they expect you to do, I guess, on a uh, storm if you're trying to dual school, instead, they've added the new pips and they've let you have the option of choosing what you want to do. So you can actually see what jewels that you can get, but essentially, if I'm understanding this right, I believe that the power pins are based on things like convert, accuracy, that type of stuff. Essentially very utility-oriented stuff. The shield pins are based on block, resist, and outgoing, so they're very defensive-oriented stats. And the sword ones, which get really exciting, you can actually affix sword ones. They give you pierce, damage, crit, that kind of stuff. Now, the hat specifically might be extremely important to keep your eye out for because it actually gives the only shield uh, uh, pin slot out of every other piece of gear. Now, this obviously has a lot of implications for schools that love that six round aura. That six round aura is extremely good in PvP, but a shield slot could be extra resist to a really uh, to a school and just make that matchup really good. It could mean extra offensive stats for using other hits. And obviously, the one extra resist, the four damage, the extra crit, the extra block, and the extra health are not too shy be either definitely a big upgrade so i mean i highly recommend using it i obviously think some people will keep the aura for the four damage but consider that this update does not have a damage drop off anymore as is right now which means you get all four of that damage so i feel like it's kind of obvious that it's an upgrade but you know some people might, might might like the aura who knows we'll see what we'll see time will tell now the robes are just merciless gear and they're upgraded i'm comparing the the eon fractal cape whatever it is a 160 storm robe to the nullity robe this is raised gear and what you might notice is that most of the time raid gear will actually outpace this by quite a bit you'll definitely get a little bit more pierce which is obviously important and you'll even get a little bit of resist which i think is pretty high actually 12 resist pretty high for a storm rope but in my opinion what you lose out on damage and pip chance and accuracy it's gonna make you fail pip a lot it's gonna make you fizzle a lot it definitely just looks absolutely sick i just gotta say it looks absolutely sick but the more you're struggling to get pip chance and the more you're struggling to actually get that accuracy, the less useful the robes are gonna be. I think the Nullity robe, the Void robe, the Motors robe, they're still gonna be very meta for Storm and Fire, probably. But maybe around Myth is where you might consider this. Honestly, 15 resist on a Myth, it's pretty good. You're giving up four resist compared to the Motors, but you're gaining a ton of peers. Yes, you lose a little bit of HP as well compared to Motors and Block, but you're gaining so much damage. Time will tell if these are actually worth it over the Motors robe. We're getting very, very close to the point where the Motors robe, which is, by the way, not even a 150 piece, it's a 130 piece. We're getting to the point where that might actually not become the best robe anymore, especially for schools like Life, for like Death, for example. Death has a nine pierce on this. It's a no-brainer that you're gonna want to use this or something similar to this. Ice is a little weird because the Cerberus robe is so good, but the five pierce isn't terrible. The 17 resist, obviously not awful. We're getting to the point where the robes might actually start keeping up with other gear from packs and raids. So who knows? This might be good. Obviously, the sword and the power and the sword jewel slap thing. Not as important as a shield one on a hat, in my opinion. But, again, if you're trying to do off-school stuff, you're gonna want stuff like accuracy. You're gonna want stuff like damage, maybe, to hit with. And finally, the boots. These go absolutely crazy. Like, you just it's just a pure upgrade. You just get, like, for the storm, you just get four extra damage. You get a little bit of HP. And again, I have to note this again. Before, your damage used to experience a drop-off for PvP. Obviously, I'm not gonna go into PvP with these stats, because I will lose. I have too little HP, too little resist, and way too little block with this. But let's say that I were to go in with 175 damage. What used to happen is that when you moused over your damage, it would give you a lower drop-off, basically. So you can tell here, though, that my 175 damage that my gear gives is also acting as 175. 
75 damage in PvP. Will this stay this way? I guess, again, time will tell. It's very early in test realm. But this essentially means that what used to happen, which is you would really want, like, you know, good resist. You would maybe even want crit. You block, pierce. You'd want all those stats before damage because damage used to just drop off after a while. That might not be a thing anymore. So if you're a high damage school, you're not getting punished as much as you used to be for having high damage gear. So something that, like this, right, where you actually get four extra damage, it is a gigantic upgrade. There's no other way to put it. Now, the wands, the thames, rings, amulets, all of that, they don't have the, the new pins. So now we can start creating, you know, we, we can we can see if maybe they're good or not. I'm currently wearing the nullity uh, wand, and I'm losing nine damage and, 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 and to gain one pierce. This would never be worth it with the damage drop off. However, time will tell if the 160 version of the raid gear will be better. If not, the 30 damage and nine pierce is miles, miles better than the nullity wand. So this might be the meta wand again. And it might actually be the case, depending on how big the difference between the pierce and the damages on the raid wands compared to the regular ones, these might just be meta for every school. It just might be a gigantic damage buff for every single school. And it's not like they really have low pierce either. So if you have the wand, I probably recommend using this on any school, whether it's for PvP, PvE, anything. The Athames are very basic. I honestly think they're literally, they just took Merciless Gear and added like two damage and health. That's literally all it is. I guess maybe it'll help you pit fail a little bit, but I don't know. Like, I guess Storm gets three damage on the ring, which is kind of cool. Man, these are just literally merciless upgrades. You might as well get them. There's no point in running merciless gear anymore with these in the game. There's literally nothing that you give up for this. And finally, the amulets, right? I mean, they're cool. They give block, resist, pip conserve, and a lot of HP, but you have to give up mastery for them because they're not mastery amulets. I don't really think it makes sense not to run mastery. You could. You could try it. I don't think it's particularly worth maybe if they gave an extra stat like pierce i would consider it it's not like they're terrible it's just even the resist is lower than most mastery amulets for most of these schools so there's nothing to write home about on these i mean the hp is cool i guess for some of the schools like 538 for life pretty decent not really anything good and finally the decks they don't give p serve and their tier slot jewels which is kind of annoying but they add a new a stat in this world which is arch mastery which literally lets you gain school pips faster if there is a triangle slot version of these i will be going after those it seems like they really just follow the merciless thing which means you know i don't know if y'all know this but the merciless decks are pretty ass in lemuria because of the tier slot but there should be you know like similar decks that give probably block and peace serve and they give a triangle socket i think those are gonna be the decks that i'm gonna actively see now where do you farm this gear if you're not gonna craft them i've already started farming for them and i've actually gotten them as regular drops so for example, I already got the Fractal Eon at them without any crafting. So basically, they're following a formula with Merciless Gear again, but they didn't actually do this with the initial release of Lemuria, so a lot of people might not know about this. This is really important. All of your gear is not going to be from one source anymore. So for example, right, there's a Penguin boss that drops the boots that you'll find if you do the plot of the, the Novas and you'll get to there. The last boss seems to be dropping robes and wands, so that's like a really important thing. And there should be side bosses dropping this Athame, basically. This Athame drops from a side boss, so you have to do a side quest for it. And there's a main quest boss that drops a ring. Again, I don't want to spoil too much, but basically that is what they're doing. And I guess while you're farming for these, you can get the lesser versions of them, which are required in the recipes. So essentially, it's doing what Lemuria did. If, you cra if, you're, if you're, like, basically farming a lot and you just don't get the drop, eventually what will happen is at least you'll get, you know the lower version of the boots, for example, and you'll also be getting these pixels and polygons dropped. And what will end up happening is eventually you'll be able to craft this. So either you farm a lot and craft it, or you get lucky and get like, a, I guess the jackpot drop, which is the best version of the boots without having to craft it. All in all, the pins really seem to be the highlight of this update for me anyways, especially the shield pin. You can do a lot of stuff with it. You just get a little extra resist. You get extra block if you really want. But keep in mind, the pins, they are not, they're like the opposite of school specific. Meaning if a pin gives storm stats, I can't affix storm damage and pierce on. I can't do that. So even while you're upgrading it for damage, you're not going to get extra damage from pins. That's not how these pins work. They're literally just for dual school stuff. And basically to, you know, fill in the holes that regular gear doesn't. Like, like accuracy, like pierce, like damage if you're hitting with off school. As far as how good these pins get, that's gonna be the real question. So far, I've gotten pierce and crit ones, and I've also got a damage and crit one. 
I assume that means that there will be a damage and pierce one, which will be the best pin if you're trying to hit with off school, because that's just the damage stuff. So we'll see. Will we be able to put stuff like this on a storm and do stuff like luminous on a storm? Maybe. Could I put something like this on a storm and maybe use spells that are ice? Maybe like a Colossus random. Stuff like this could really change up the game. It could shake it up a lot, which is why I highly recommend getting this gear over the Merciless gear, no matter what piece you're replacing. I think the only debatable parts of this are obviously the decks with tier jewels. I don't think anyone should really need to use them. And the robes. I think the robes are a little iffy because, you know, when you run full Merciless gear, you'll notice your accuracy and pip chance is bad. It's kind of the same issue with this. So one robe to really fix the problems with accuracy, pip chance, block, all that with the motorist robe or raid gear in general, that normally should fix things, but... Other than that, it's extremely worth it. Let me know what you guys think of the stats on this gear, how you get them, the pins. I'd love to hear all of y'all's comments. As always, drop a like if you enjoyed, leave us something new. I just wanted to make all of these videos in case people were returning to the game and they didn't know what was happening. Hopefully the video helped. As always, if somebody hasn't told you're awesome today, they doing something wrong. I'll see y'all soon. I look forward to reading your comments. Stay awesome. And yeah, y'all. Yeah.